Today's perspective guest is one of the most respected scientists working in Africa today. Dr. Tabelo Niyokong has been awarded South Africa's highest order and has received accolades from the African Union and UNESCO for her research into photodynamic therapy and how it can be used to kill cancerous cells. She joins us now live from Johannesburg. Thank you very much for being with us here on uh, France 24. Now, first of all, in the field of cancer research, just just how groundbreaking or life-changing could photodynamic therapy be? Thank you very much for having me. And I'm also from a small town called Grahamstown, now Makanda, not Johannesburg. I'm a small town person. Photodynamic therapy would eliminate the side effects of chemotherapy because it is specific, it can go straight to the cancer. It can be designed to go straight to the cancer. In addition, the laser light that, that is used in, in this therapy will be directed only to the cancer, unlike chemotherapy and other treatments that kill the whole body. That is the advantage. Now, for those viewers who aren't aware of, of, of what you've been doing and what your work actually is, just talk us through in very simple terms what you've discovered and what this therapy actually uh, um, is all about. This therapy exists already, and it has existed for a long time. Um, in the US, in the UK, it has existed for a long time. What we are doing is designing molecules that will be specific for cancer, that are less, have less side effects, uh, and also in, in, including them in nanoparticles, so they go straight to the cancer. And also in Africa, we have a lot of light. This, a treatment has a potential of helping people uh, who suffer from HIV because they suffer from skin cancer. And it can be applied in any uh, laboratory, not laboratory, really, in any clinic anywhere in the world. That's why we are focusing on it here in, in Africa. Now, from what I can tell, and, and, and please do correct me if I'm wrong, this is, of course, in the clinical trial phase uh, in the West. But how many years uh, will it take for this therapy to, roll, to be rolled out and more widely used? Uh, to be honest with you, the government of South Africa right now has been talking to me. They want to take it over because as, as a scientist, I'm in the lab, I'm training students, I make the drugs, but to go to the clinical, I need help. And so they are taking it over. They want to speed break it so that it's able to be affordable as quickly as possible. They've been talking to me already. We are putting documents together. And just in general, global terms, around the world in 2019, in your view, are we winning in the fight against cancer? Well, the, the problem is I, I wish we knew the causes of all cancers, because you can only know, win if you know the causes for all the cancers. But um, I, I think we are winning in a sense, but the side effects sometimes are more harmful than the cancer itself. That's why we are working with this treatment, in order that people don't suffer from the side effects of the cancer, of the cancer treatment themselves. Now, I read uh, yesterday that researchers at the University of Western Cape are now looking at whether sea sponges uh, hold the key to developing medication to combat cancer as well. Um, it does appear that South Africa is somewhat flying the flag when it comes to cancer uh, research. Uh, do you agree with that? And if so, why? I, I agree with it. I think South Africa has done fantastically in terms of promoting research, not just cancer research, any research. They have made a commitment to make sure that you don't concentrate only on building houses, only on fighting poverty, and you neglect the high-tech part of, 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 of life. Because otherwise you, you lose stuff. You lose people to other countries. South Africa has been able to gain people back into South Africa because of their policies and giving us facilities to be able to be as good as any Western or European country. And across the African continent, what, in your view, is preventing more progress being made when it comes to medical research of any kind? The, the problem there has to be a, a funding system that works. There has to be a belief in the, in the science. You see, the products of science or research are not immediate. And many people want immediate results. You have to plan for many years in order to finally get the, 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 what you are hoping to get. So many countries do not plan that far 
And that is the major problem. But I think South Africa is doing well. I'm sure there are other countries also that are doing well, like Egypt that I know are doing well. They have a funding system in place to, to help researchers. And just going back to your own personal story, what made you become a chemist in the first place? <laughs> you know, um, what made me become a scientist in the first place is because I think I don't have much patience and uh, I started off doing the arts. Then I realized I was bored because people in the arts, sorry to all of them, they just talk a lot. And I, I wanted, I'm a very direct person. I kind of get things done. And the sciences made me challenge my brain. That's why I went to the tech into the sciences. Chemistry, I, at some stage I wanted to be a doctor, but chemists, I realised that chemists are better because chemists actually make the drugs. OK, Dr Tabello Neokong, that's sadly all we have time for, but thank you very much for being with us here on France 24 uh, for today's uh, Perspective segment. Thank you very much.